There is an old saying, well planned is half done. So before initiating any action, there will be or there must be some plans. And in our business concerns also, planning is an essential decision making. As we all know, the first step of management starts with planning, planning, organizing, staffing, controlling, etc. So planning is a vital process and it, it determines the future course of action of every business. So there will be some plans for every business and on the basis of the periodicity the plans can be broadly classified into three namely strategic planning budgetary planning and operational planning strategic planning means the planning which determines long term period of time that is after 10 years or 15 years what must be the business organization's position what must be the market share what must be the brand value etc these plans are determined on on the basis of the strategic planning and these are all long term objectives now our second plan namely budgetary planning budgetary planning mainly focuses on short term or medium term plans that is planning for a certain period of time say for a year quarter half of a in a year etc but the budgetary plannings are mainly constituted in order to make this strategic plan work so the budgetary plans are prepared in order to attain the strategic plans after this budgetary planning there will be some operational plans which will determine day to day activities that is day to day production labor etc as like the budgetary planning operational planning are intended to achieve this budgetary objectives so right now we are moving on to the chapter namely budgetary control we have already seen what is budgets in our IPCC syllabus. We have seen the various types of budgets namely production budgets, sales budgets, raw material acquisition budget, master budget, flexible budget, zero based budget etc. In the final scenario we have to go in depth into the subject and we, and we can analyze the same accordingly. So here we will focus on budgetary control and let us look into the key requirements of budgetary control. So let us look into how the budgets are being prepared. Preparation of budgets. Before preparing the budgets, we have to analyze the key requirements up front. What are all required in order to prepare a budget? When analyzing the key requirements, we have to see the following points namely first one before preparing any budgets there must be some coordination coordination between various departments say coordination between sales department and production department production department and stores department stores department and material procurement department etc so here in order to prepare a good budget or one of those essential requirements of preparing a budget is there must be coordination between various departments then only we can prepare a good budget and second key requirement is that participative budgeting the key persons who are preparing the budget should have the actual knowledge of production process material requirement process sales process etc only those who are directly related with all those processes can make a good budget so that instead of top to bottom process there must be down to top budgeting then only the budgeting objectives can be attained with the advantages of this participative budgeting are that improved quality can be achieved improved quality can be achieved 
as we mentioned earlier this budget has been prepared by the operating managers or the ma men or the labor who are involved in those production processes it will make them to work hard and thereby the quality based production can be achieved with second one improved motivation as the budgets are being prepared by the workman itself or the operating managers itself they will be having a motivation in order to achieve the budget so they will improve their quality and efficiency in production process and thereby the firm can achieve better quality production from improved motivation from the employee part third one better results improved quality and improved motivated employee means it will result in better results so through the participative budgeting the company can achieve or the business organization can achieve the better results this is the key second key in order to make a budget that is participative budgeting <coughs> now the next key requirement is a budget manual budget manual means a manual a book which keeps in records regarding the basic basic elements present in budget preparation that is that are uh, who are all the key persons who are concerned with preparation of budgets who are all concerned with the actual achievement of these objectives etc all those key figures etc will be present in this budget manual so budget manual is a book which includes all the relevant information or data which are required to prepare a budget so this is the key requirement there must be a budget manual now the fourth requirement is identification of principal budget factor identifying principal budget factor what is principal budget factor we have seen it in the marginal costing itself that there is some limiting factors and here in our budgeting terminology the very same key limiting factor or the limiting factor which limits the total production in a firm or a bottleneck activity is termed as principal budget factor so in order to prepare a good budget it is very very important to find out the principal budgeting factor because the other all activities are connected or are linked with that of this principal budget factor so now let us analyze how we can find out this principal budget factor so principal budget factor we have to analyze how we have to identify this principal budget factor identification there are two types of scenario that is if a firm is engaged with single product production single product organization and multi product organization so first of all we have to analyze how the principal budget factor is being identified in a single product manufacturing concerns or product organizations now what are all steps involved we have to analyze in case of a single product organization there are various steps involved in identifying the principal budget factor the steps are number 1 finding capacity of production you would have heard this term capacity production capacity cost accounting standards issued by institute of cost accounting of india board in it cost accounting standard 2 and 3 talks about the capacity of production there are various terminologies connected with that of this capacity that is practical capacity normal capacity actual capacity ideal capacity etc so here this capacity is normally taken as normal capacity normal capacity means the capacity which has been achieved by the firm normally during last 3 or 5 years so on the basis of that average will be taken here as normal capacity and first of all while identifying this principal budget factor we have to find out the normal capacity of that production firm the second step in identifying the same is finding out the maximum capacity that can be achieved by 
various departments. We all know there are various departments in connected in with relation with the production of various products, namely machining department, assembly department, painting department, packing department, etc. So we have to segregate all those departments and have to find out the maximum capacity that can be produced in each and every department. And the third step is to select the minimum capacity from the above various departments. Say machining department is capable of producing 10,000 units, assembly department is capable of producing 8,000 units, packing department is capable of doing again 10,000 units if we assume. Here the minimum is 8,000 units that can be assembled in assembly department. So after identifying the maximum capacity among the various departments, we have to select the minimum capacity among the lot. That is our third step. In the fourth step, we have to identify the total market demand of the product. The production is mainly dependent upon the total demand of the product in the outside market. So here in this first step, we have to identify the total outside market that is sales, expected sales during the future period. And the fifth step is to compare step number three and four and find out the minimum production. If the firm can produce 10,000 and even though the sales demanded in the outside market is 15,000, it cannot produce the same without increasing the actual right of capacity. So that the fifth step is to identify the minimum among three and four factors and thus we can identify the principal budgeting factor. Here if the sale is lower than the actual capacity, the sales, the consumer demand will be the principal budgeting factor and if the supply that is the actual production that is capable is lower than the actual sales available then the capacity, the practical capacity or normal capacity will be the principal budgeting factor. So we were discussing about the principal budgeting factor in case of a single product. Now let us do some illustrations in order to find out how principal budgeting factor is being found out. Let us do an illustration in order to find out the capacity that is normal capacity up front illustration. In a year 15 workers are working in a department on a single shift basis. Statutory holidays in that year are 18. Normal maintenance requires 250 hours per month. The capacity utilization during 5 years are being given with. So there is a company and there are 15 workers employed by that company and the firm is or the company is working on single shift basis. There are some statutory holidays in any year and it amounts to 18. So there are 18 statutory holidays. Normal maintenance required is 250 hours per month. So there are some normal idle time also that is for repairs or maintenance activities and it amounts to 250 hours per month. The capacity utilization during the last five years, that is the total labor hours that can be uh, utilized during the last five years has been given with. In 2000 it is 30,000, 2001 it is 38,000, 2002 it is 31,000, 2003 it is 30,900, 2004 it is 26,000 etc. Now we have to calculate the capacity of the organization. Now we have to calculate the maximum capacity here. The maximum capacity, as we mentioned here, the maximum capacity is there are 15 workers and there are 8 hours per day and 365 days. So the maximum capacity that can be used is 43,800 hours. But we all know this is only the rated capacity and this cannot be achieved. Uh, by utilizing this maximum capacity. So there, is, there will be automatically some normal losses, normal idle time. So we have to deduct that normal holidays or normal statutory holidays from this in order to calculate the normal capacity. Normal capacity from this 48,300 we have to deduct the statutory holidays and that amounts to 250 hours per month into 12 and some statutory holidays. So after deducting that figure, we can derive at 32,400. That is by deducting that statutory holiday days and that maintenance days from this maximum capacity, we can derive at the normal capacity. Now, 
That is the no, this is not the normal capacity, this is the actual practical capacity. Practical capacity means which can be achieved with. That is after deducting all those normal losses and all, uh, what the firm can achieve is this practical capacity. After that, the normal capacity has to be calculated with. Normal capacity means as we mentioned earlier, average capacity utilization during the last few years by taking while taking that random or while taking the hours from the previous years we have to take into consideration the fact that we should not take in the extent figures that is low figures nor extensively high figures we have to avoid that figures only the normal performance should be taken into consideration while calculating the average so here as far as this illustration is concerned there are five and I, five years data given in here in 2000 that is 30,000, 38,000, 31,000, 30,926,000. Here, in the year of 2001, it records the maximum capacity utilization which is 38,000 and in the year 2004, the actual production is only or the actual labor utilization is only 26,000. We have to exclude that minimum figure and maximum figure and we have to take into consideration only those normal figures. So, those normal figures are 30,000, 31,000 and 30,900. We have to divide it by 3, that is 3 years data has been taken with. So, it would amount to 30,633. So, by taking only those normal years data into consideration and by taking the average, the normal capacity that the firm can achieve is 30,633. That capacity which is used in our principal budgeting factor is this normal capacity. <coughs> this normal capacity is the capacity that is being you that is is being achieved by the company over the last few years. Now let us calculate how the step number two, three, and four that is calculation of maximum capacity from each department, selecting the minimum capacity from the lot and comparing it with sales department through and at another illustration. Now let us go on to illustration number two. We just have calculated the normal capacity of the firm. Now let us go through to another illustration in order to find out how the step number two, three and four has been calculated with. There are three departments with different normal capacity and time required per unit is given. So here the illustration number one we sold how to calculate the capacity. Here the normal capacity is being given with. And there are three departments namely machining department, assembly department and finishing department. The capacity for machining department is 12,000 labor hours, assembly department it is 8,000 labor hours, finishing department it is 9,000 labor hours. The time required to product, produce is 4 machine hour and assembly department is 5 labor hour, finishing department is 3 labor hours. The maximum production in each department can be found out. So let us tabulate the same up front. There are three departments namely machining department, assembly department and finishing department and among that the capacity that can be achieved is 12,000 here, 8,000 and 9,000 <coughs> and the next data given is the time required per unit. Time required per unit is 4 per unit, 5 per unit and 3 per unit. Now let us calculate the maximum capacity. A divided by B that is capacity divided by time required, 12,000 divided by 4, 3,000 is the maximum production that can be achieved with. Here it is 1,600 and now 9,000 divided by 3 it is 3,000. So here even though machining and finishing department can achieve 3,000 of production, the assembly department is a limiting factor here. So the maximum amount of production that can be achieved with the present capacity is 1600. So here this data has to be taken for comparing it with the sales. So file finding out the principal budgeting factor, step number 3 and 4, 2 and 3 we are analyzing with 
that is calculating the capacity for each and every department and to select the minimum from the lot. Now let us go on to the further steps through at another illustration. Next illustration. Solar Products Limited manufactures and sells a single product and has estimated sales revenue of 126 lakhs in this year based on 20 percentage profit on selling price. So here the estimated sales revenue has been given with and the estimated sales revenue in rupees it is 126 lakh that is 1.26 crores and by charging 20 percentage profit on selling price. So here after charging 20 percentage on selling price the total sales revenue is 126 lakhs. Each unit of product require 3 pounds of material P and 1.5 pounds of material Q for the manufacture as well as process time of 7 hours in machine shop and 2 and a half hours in assembly section. <coughs> so here there are some data regarding the material and the labor hours required and the material required is material P's 3 pounds and material Q's 1 and a half pounds and the processing time through machining shop is 7 hours and through assembly section it is 2 and a half hours. Overheads are absorbed on blanket rate of 33.33 percentage of direct labor. So overheads are absorbed at the rate of one third of total direct labor hour. The factory works at 5 days of 8 hours a week. So there are 5 days in a week and in each day the workers work for 8 hours and there are normal 52 weeks in a year. On an average, the statutory holidays leave absenteeism and idle time amount to 96 hours, 80 hours and 64 hours respectively. So we have to deduct all those normal idle time from the maximum time in order to find out the effective hours that can be worked with. The past performance in last 3 years is being given with. In 2003, in machine shop 11 lakh and assembly shop 3 lakh 45,000. In 2004, in machine shop it is 10 lakh 30,000 and in assembly shop it is 3 lakh 20,000. In 2005, machine shop it is 10 lakh 80,000 and assembly shop it is 3 lakh 40,000. The other details are given below. Purchase price of material P and Q, P 6 per pound, Q 4 per pound. Labor rate, machine shop rupees 4 per hour, assembly shop rupees 3.20 per hour. Number of employees engaged in machine shop it is 600 employees there and in assembly shop there are 180 employees. Now the question asks us to find out the closing stock of finished goods. The opening stock of finished goods is given that is 20,000 units. Opening stock of material P and Q and closing stock of P and Q is also being given with. The question asks us to find out the estimated finished closing stock units. So we have to calculate the total number of units sold up front. After that we have to calculate the normal capacity and from that we have to calculate the total number of units produced during the year then only we can, we can calculate the closing stock unit. So let us go through step by step. First of all we have to calculate the number of units sold. The only the data given regarding the sales is the total sales revenue. From that we have to find out the total number of units sold quantity wise sales. So for that we have to prepare a course sheet. <coughs> In that course sheet there are various data given material. There are two types of material namely P and Q. P is 3 pound at the rate of 6 and Q is 1.5 pounds at the rate of 4. So 3 into 6 18 plus 1.5 into 4 6 total 24 rupees. Again there are two types of material namely P and Q. P is 3 pound at the rate of rupees 6 per pound and Q is 1 and a half pounds at the rate of 4. So 3 into 6 18, 1.5 into 4 6. 18 plus 6 total 24 rupees is required. <coughs> now the labor part. In the labor part 7 hours are required and in machining department and 2.5 hours are required in assembly department. 7 hours at the rate of 4 and 2.5 hours at the rate of 3.2. So 7 into 4 28 plus 2.5 into 3.2 it's 8. So 28 plus 8 it is 36 the labor cost. The next item namely overheads. As mentioned in the problem overheads are absorbed on the basis of labor hours 
it is 33.33 percentage so this 36 into 1 by 3 it is 12 so the total cost of production 24 plus 36 plus 12 it is 72 rupees and it is told in the problem that there is some markup markup is 25 percentage on sales so by calculating the markup 25 percentage the total would be profit it would be 18 and the sales value that is by reciprocally multiplying the sales value cost of production value we can derive at the profit and the sales value would be 72 plus 18 it would be 90 so the value per unit is 90 by adding up all those markup and it is given in the problem that the total sales value is 1.26 crores or 126 lakhs so as the total sales value is 126 lakhs and the selling price per unit is 90 the total number of units sold can be calculated with so number of units sold is equal to 126 lakhs divided by 90 and the total number of sales would be 1 lakh 40,000 units so the first data has been calculated with that is the total number of units that has been sold in the market now let us calculate the feasible production that is normal capacity divided by time per unit in machining department as we mentioned earlier there is the normal capacity by taking off the average that is three years data has been given here 11 lakh plus 10 lakh 30,000 plus 10 lakh 80,000 divided by 3 that is three years data divided by 3 so the average would be 10 lakh 70,000 that has to be divided by the number of hours required in order to produce one product that is 7 7 hours are required in order to produce a product then total number of capacity available normal capacity is 10.70 lakhs so the total number of units that can be produced maximum is 1,52,857 units so the maximum number of units that can be produced by machining department is 1,52,857 units now let us see how much the amount can be produced through assembly department in assembly department by taking the average of last three years that is 3,45,000 plus 3,20,000 plus 3,40,000 divided by 3 the average would be the normal capacity and the figure is 3,35,000 divided by the number of hours required for producing each product is 2.5 so by dividing the same the total number of units that can be produced using this assembly is 1,34,000 Now we have to compare these three figures or we have to put the minimum figure out here the minimum figure is 1.34 lakhs this 1.34 has to be compared with this 1.40 lakhs and the minimum is this 1.34 so the maximum production that can be done in a year in a period is 1.34 lakhs and the bottleneck activity is assembly department now let us calculate the closing stock the question asking us to find out the closing stock we had found out the total number of selling sales units the total production and opening stock has been given in the problem itself so let us calculate the closing stock opening stock given in the problem the opening stock has been given the opening stock in units it is 20,000 now we had found out the production units the maximum production that can be achieved is 1,34,000 units so the total units available is 1,54,000 from that we have to reduce the sales sales units we had found out it is 1,40,000 
we have to reduce the selling units from the total available figure and hence the closing stock number would be 150,000 minus 140,000 it would be 14,000 units. This is how we have to find out the principal budgeting factor and how to calculate the figures accordingly. So we were discussing about how to find out the principal budgeting factor in case of single product producing concerns. There we discussed four steps and we were illustrating the same through these two or three illustrations. Now let us analyze how to find out principal budgeting factor in case of multi product organizations. So let us analyze how it can be found out in multi product organization. Multi product. We have analyzed how it can be found in single product. Now let us analyze how it can be found in the scenario where there are more than one product. So here as we mentioned earlier the sale or demand can be the principal budgeting factor or it can be the limiting factor nor the supply can also be the limiting factor as we mentioned earlier. But the main difference between multi product and single product is that we have to analyze only a single product in case of the first situ situation whereas there will be more than one product so there will be questions regarding the product mix or the sales mix etc. So we have to determine the total quantity ha that has to be produced and sold in case of each and every product that is the various properties.